is how you solve number 9. Number 10. Number 10, a game is played where two unbiased dice are rolled and the score in the game is the greater of the two numbers shown. Ojo. The score in the game is the greater of the two numbers shown. If the two dice are the same, then the score in the game is the number shown on one of the dice. A, di a diagram showing the possible outcomes is given below. So let's understand like how the game works in the first place. See? So if my first die is 1 and my second one is also 1, well, what is my biggest value? It's 1. If my first die is 2 and my second die is 1, what is my biggest value? It's 2. Biggest value here is 3, 4, 5, 6. See? So those are pretty easy. ¿cierto? I can do the same on the other end. And now I keep filling in. ¿cierto? Here, it's going to be 2 as well. ¿vale? Ba, 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 2. Here, it's going to be 3. Here, it's going to be 4, 5, 6. See? Down at the bottom, we have 3, 3, 4, 5, 6. I know it's a little bit tedious, but eventually you're going to notice a pattern that's going to be really easy to like follow or whatever. See? First thing, here it's increasing 1, 2, 3. ¿cierto? That means I can put 4, 5, 6. Here, there's a bunch of 5s. So I can put... 5, here I can put 6, 6, here I can put 4, 4, here I can put 5, 5, 5, here I can put 6, 6, 6. All right, that was just a patterns thing. If you have trouble noticing them, dude, don't worry. Just take your moment, fill in the diagram. The patterns thing was just to make it quick, but you do have to fill it in because it's going to make it a lot easier for parts A, B, and C. So let T be the random variable, the score in the game. Complete the table to show the probability distribution of t. So if the score in the game is 1, we have to find the probability that this is, you know, a thing. ¿cierto? So where are my 1s? Here's my 1. Is there any other 1? No, there's not. Because I filled in my table, and it's much easier to see now. So this is going to be probability of 1. Out of how much? Out of my total. What is my total? All of the black dots. You can count them one by one, or you can do 6 times 6. Because here there is 6, and there there is 6. 6 times 6 is going to be 36. 1 over 36, probability of getting a 1. What about a 2? The 2s are there. That is how many? 3. My total is unchanged, 3 out of 36. My 3s are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 over 36. My 4s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7, 36. Fives, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. God damn, nine over 36. Another pattern, I'm adding by two each time. Look at that, 11 out of 36. See, if you want to double check, you can also count. That's what I'm doing now. 10, 11, all right, cool beans. See, yep, so that is part A. Part B, find the probability that a player scores at least three in a game. So at least, ¿cierto? That means it can score 3, 4, 5, or 6, but it's at least 3. So 3, 4, 5, 6 is going to be, let me do it in red, ¿cierto? at least 3, any one of these boys. ¿cierto? So what's the probability of rolling or getting 3, 4, 5, or 6? We will have 5 over 36 plus 7 over 36 plus 9 over, that is a 9 by the way, sorry, 9 over 36 plus 11 over 36, see? Why am I adding here? Because you add when you talk with or in probabilities, ¿cierto? So this guy scores either three or four or five or six, three or four or five or six, see? That is why we are adding. If I say and when calculating probabilities, we would be multiplying, okay? Just a general rule of thumb. Might as well put it down here. Multiply. If you find yourself saying and. See? Cool. So that is P, B part I. Um, let's, of course, find out how much that is. That is 32. 32 over 36. See? So that is part B part I. Part B part double I, we have a player score 6, given that they scored at least 3. This one is a little bit tougher, but, 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 but. The word given, you should immediately think conditional. 
This is one of the few things you kind of have to memorize. Anytime it says given, it's a condition, ¿cierto? So we're talking about conditional probability. What the hell is conditional probability? Check your formula booklet. We have this here, ¿cierto? It looks a little nasty, but hey, let's work around it, ¿sí? So, this is how you, like, approach it, ¿vale? Um, what this is telling you here is that the probability that you get A given B, ¿sí? Equals ba, 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 probability of A and B divided by, I think it was PB, ¿cierto? Divided by PB, ¿sí? So writing it out, I have probability of A given B equals probability of A and B divided by probability of just B, ¿sí? So I just turned these symbols into words and it's going to be easier to understand what I'm plugging in, ¿cierto? So if here it says a player scores six, given that they scored at least three, this is my given, ¿cierto? All right. So probability that they scored six, given that they scored at least three. So what the conditional probability does is that it sort of like makes smaller your sample, ¿cierto? Like where you're pooling from. And so all of the ones that scored at least three are all of the guys over here, ¿cierto? So you're kind of like forgetting about the one and two for now, ¿sí? Now let's just have faith in the formula and follow it, ¿sí? So, so P of A given B, ¿cierto? We're tr still trying to figure it out. A and B, ¿cierto? So it's anyone that scored at least three and scored six is going to be orange and this, ¿cierto? So what is the probability that I roll an orange? Well, we got it here, 32 over 36. Probability that I roll a six, we put it in yellow, ¿cierto? So and B. I said that we multiply, we say and. So I will be multiplying over here. Um, 32 over 36 times da, 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 11 over 36. ¿sí? Probability of just B, ¿cierto? Given that they scored at least 3, is this guy here, 32 over 36. And so here it looks nasty. You can put it in your calculator. It's going to work. But you can actually get rid of this guy with this guy because it's numerator and denominator. It's multiplying and end up with just 11 over 36. That is PAB. That is part B double I. See? Awesome. Finally, part C. Find the expected score of the game. So the expected score is a little bit more weird. See? And it kind of has to do with like um, how many ones you have, how many twos you have, how many threes you have, how many fours, fives, and six, and the probability of each of these in a way. ¿cierto? So I know it, it sounds kind of weird, it's hard to explain, but let's follow the formula and you know it'll it'll make more sense. See, so for the expected value, ¿vale? we need to ask ourselves how many ones do we have. ¿cierto? I'll actually do it up here because there's way more space. So, how many ones do we have? Well, we have one one. So, one times one. See? How many twos do we have? We have three twos. How many threes do we have? We have... Da, 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 one, two, three, four, five. Five threes. ¿cierto? How many fours? Seven threes. Sorry. How many fours? Seven fours. How many fives? Nine fives. How many sixes? Nine sixes. See? So that is how you set it up. Now, my expected value here is not quite done yet. ¿cierto? It's not quite done because I need to look at my scenarios. ¿cierto? And there are 36 scenarios here. So I divide by 36. The most important step is understanding, like, okay, there's one one, so I do one times one. How many twos? There's three twos, so I do three times two. And I add in between them, because it is an expected value. Divide by 36, because there's 36 of these bad boys right here. ¿cierto? 36 cases. I have to do I have to do it like this. ¿sí? So I put this into my calculator. See what I get. You're going to end up with 161 over 36. ¿sí? Which is the same as uh, 4.4722. ¿vale? And so what this is telling me is that each, each time that you play this game, your expected amount of like 
score you're gonna get is this here is a little bit more than four see all right that is number 10.